scared, and he kept like every chance he would sit down, and he just didn't want to walk anymore. So I was like, "All right, fuck this. We're like, you know, maybe three quarters of a mile from home. We're gonna we're gonna jog, you know, because if we if I just yeah. run, maybe they won't sit down. Maybe we can just get home." And like literally the day before, I was driving and listening to something about the Olympics or something on TV or the radio, whatever, and I was like, "Man." Running so stupid. Like, you just do it. You just do it. Like, what's the big deal? Like, I could right, never right. imagine myself not running if I was running, you know? <laughs> like, right. Yeah, but, but weightlifting, that's different, you know? And, yeah, ex- exactly. But, but then, like, I ran, you know, anywhere. It was probably two thirds to three quarters of a mile home. And, dude, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> like, by the time I got back, like, I was fine. But I was like, man, that was the most I've run in probably three or four years. That's not good, right? Yeah, yeah, no, and and that did make me feel like, all right, maybe I should just do a CrossFit workout real quick or or something, yeah. just to kind of balance the scale a little. Yeah, bit. circuit training. I mean, do whatever. It doesn't have to be like I I I personally uh, I, I can't really run uh, too much anymore. I got this current little issue right now, but once I get that fixed, I'll go back to it. But like, okay, uh, so I kickbox a lot, or I'll roll, or uh, maybe I'll shadow box. Maybe it's like something. But there's no reason we can't do some movement like that because yeah, like if you have to jog a half a mile and you're gassed, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not good. Yeah, yeah, it's not like for somebody record, asked me to snatch to get the dogs home. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. For, um, for the record, my uh, my my puppy is the exact same way. We have to he'll sprint to the park basically because he'll drag us down the road. Oh yeah. But then I have oh, to yeah. drag him back home because he's like every two steps he's like I'm done. Yeah. Like yeah. come on, dude. He's like I'm done. It's, yeah. It's that. it's funny. I have two Great Danes as well, so it's like two 135 pound dogs oh, it's like man. i'm not picking them up you know that's that, no. like <laughs> or i guess i could if i had to i could pick one of them up but they're not both coming up no no way um yeah but okay so kind of you know to this point before we we move on um sprint training is something that i got into a conversation with one of the other coaches in our gym about recently about you know seeing a weightlifter doing sprints it's not totally uncommon but I don't really know of any necessarily high level weightlifters that do it. Now that could be because they've gotten to a point that the special the specialized training, like, you know, the they don't necessarily need as much of the GPP focus because they've they're so honed in. But mm-hmm. what what is like the role of sprint training for a strength athlete? You know, I guess physique yeah. like yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, it just really, really, really depends. I if if you're really again at a pretty high level or you're 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 close to high level in a specific sport like weightlifting and your coach or you were like, Hey, I'm not sprinting. I don't want to risk pulling a hamstring. Right. I, I get it. Hey, yeah. Okay. So totally hands off there. Uh, but with, with weightlifting specifically, since the training and the sport are the same thing, mm-hmm. one way you can help, uh, increase in, in, introduce variation is if you can do a little bit of sprint work. Uh, and now again, I probably wouldn't do it six weeks out from, American Open. Right, right. But, but maybe, you know, you just finished national championships or Pan Ams or whatever your, you know, your local meet, whatever your big thing is. And you got seven months before you got your next big one coming up. Well, I probably, I think you have time to maybe get in a little bit of sprint work. It is a little bit different. It still can train your hamstrings, your glutes, your core to be in perfect positions, whatever you're looking for. You still learn to move fast. It can be reinvigorated psychologically mm-hmm. to break up the monotony. If I mean, it was never a problem with me. I didn't care, but some people that's helpful. Right. Um, and I think, you know, if you look at Louis Simmons, his folks have, I mean, testosterone and steroids aside, but his folks have shown pretty well that you can still train really hard, really often. If you introduce a slightly different stimulus or, or use a slightly different movement. And the problem with weightlifting is you really can't do that. Yeah. I mean, you're not gonna really change your hand position on your snatch. Like, yeah. you know, you know, people don't really do that. And so maybe, you know, it's a little bit of sprint work, uh, a short duration stuff, Maybe even it's just acceleration, so five meter sprint, you know, just to start and to slow down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that could be. Uh, I think there's some merit there, but you know, I'd also understand if a coach came on and was like, "Absolutely not for we're not pulling hamstrings, so we can get right some risk stuff. versus oh, reward." Exactly. So I would say it depends, but it would be something you should at least consider. But then the same principle is like with farmer carries, sled pushes, you know, that that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. awesome. Uh, now, one thing I did make a note of uh, to kind of backtrack just a little bit that I wanted to ask, uh, you know, we we talked about being in competition and having to follow yourself and, and having to tap into that other energy system. Is that 
Is there any correlation between that, or I should say, you know, your ATP recovery time and your mass or your body weight? Uh, or is it just the fact that big dudes or big women, they just get tired, you know, like a little bit easier? Because, you know, I know that is a thing that it's like, you know, even what I see in here with the weightlifters that I work with, the smaller they are, generally, the quicker they can stand up and do another lift. Versus, you know, uh, we have a couple of super heavyweights or just a couple larger weight class people that they might sit down for five or six minutes, you know, between heavy right. attempts and they're fine. Whereas if, if a smaller person did that, they would be cooled down. Yeah. So what you have there is a mismatch between strength to body weight ratio. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have Sinclair score, right? It's exactly why we have it because there's not a linear, linear increase in strength ability with a linear increase in size. Right. It's curvilinear, right? Or, or, or worse. So that's just why we can't just say, hey, take the person whose body weight, divide them by, or their lift, take them by their body weight, that person's the overall champion. I mean, if so, who, no one would ever beat 56 kilo, 62 kilo people. Right, yeah. I mean, look at those numbers. Look at Sula Monoglu's, or even the guy this this year that did triple body weight cleaning. Right, yeah, yeah. But the best clean and clean jerk ever, 264-ish kilos or something like that, that's not even double body weight for those guys. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just divide these things by body weight because you have a diminished loss. And in addition, we start to really get to numbers with these bigger folks that are human physiology challenging. <laughs> like you put right, 600 yeah. pounds on your front, on your neck and your, and your shoulders, like that's just a big old load. Um, and, and you probably need, that's going to start tapping into bigger resources for these bigger folks. And it's just going to be a lot more damaging at the overall level. So that's probably what you're looking at. Um, in all of them. And, you know, they just have so much more muscle mass to power to move that load. So it's diminishing returns for sure. Yeah. So it's not necessarily that their body is working differently because of their size. It's just the load versus having more, I guess, muscle fibers that need to recover. Yeah. More muscle fibers is simply bigger muscle fibers. You've got a longer physical distance to travel. Yeah. So the, the molecules that you're trying to get into your cell and the waste products you're trying to get out of the cell, they have to travel further. Um, and, and you just, I mean, this is a physics issue. They've got to go a further physical distance. So that's just going to take longer. Well, yeah. And I guess now this is an assumption, you know, I guess, please tell me if this is correct or incorrect, but I would also imagine, you know, the larger the person, at least you could generalize probably the higher body fat percentage so their body heat is or their their te their body temperature is just going to stay a little bit higher so that maybe a longer rest wouldn't necessarily be as detrimental to them i mean is that accurate at all uh kind of not really yeah it's I mean, okay it's okay to tell me if i'm way off base on that <laughs> yeah uh i mean you're probably right there are again there's hundreds of examples of 94 and 85 kilo folks that are super fit and super lean but as a general answer i think you're probably right as you go up the weight classes you probably go down in um, body fat or you probably go down in body composition right in other words uh, they probably have more body fats so that's probably a fair statement uh and then the the heat generation probably is not a result of their fat but simply a result of their, their overall their overall mass that they have to move so it's okay. not really a fat issue, but it is simply a, like you just have a lot more mass to move that's going to generate more friction. It's going to generate more heat. So it's not it's not necessarily that they would retain it any better or worse than someone who is lean. Yeah, I don't think so. Probably not. Um, the the difference would probably be more important to be how fit they are versus not. So if you took right. two athletes that are 100 kilos and one of them's got 10% body fat and one of them's 20% body fat, well, if they're both equally fit, they're probably going to be at the same temperature. Yeah, but if one's more fit than the other one, then that matters. And t typically, people that are leaner are also more fit. Mm -hmm. Not always, but right? Typically, right. so that's probably why that association is probably okay, but probably not a uh, probably a correlation there, but not a causation. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. So now I'd like to kind of get into the uh, I guess the main or general phases of w a weightlifting training program, uh, mm -hmm. which obviously a lot of this, as far as like you know, someone's actual progression is going to depend on their goal if they have a competition coming up the amount of time on the calendar etc but uh, i feel like most weightlifting training programs tend to revolve around hypertrophy uh strength training max strength or intensity training and then some kind of like taper or recovery training as mm -hmm. well in there uh, so i'd like to kind of go through each uh you know one by one and talk about what the body goes through 
the purpose of each one of these for optimal performance and uh, you know, the way your body reacts to those kinds of training versus the others. Cool. Uh, let's do it. Awesome. So let's start with hypertrophy training because generally, again, this is an assumption, but I feel like most weightlifters at the beginning of a training cycle or whatever they were, they're going to do, they could do some sort of hypertrophy work. So what does the body go through during hypertrophy work or what is the purpose of hypertrophy training for performance? So, yeah, what you're trying to do is a couple of things. Number one, you're just trying to improve overall conditioning or fitness so that you're able to handle the subsequent or, or upcoming training volume. That's what you're really trying to get used to. So you can handle all of the strength repetitions and the strength sets that you're going to do down the road and not break. So what that means is you want to add some muscle mass. You want to get a little bit of bigger muscle size, but you're also trying to improve the structure and quality of the connective tissue, of the tendons, the things that are going into the joint. And those things are typically a uh, do not receive blood flow. And so what that means is they generally respond better to higher volume. And by volume, I'm actually in this case referring to probably more, more repetitions per set. Right. So not necessarily total volume, like if you're doing 20 sets of two or something. But in this case, they, they like bigger numbers mm-hmm. generally. And so you're trying to prepare those things uh, for the upcoming insult that you're, that you're going to get. Uh, and then also you're trying to get blood flow in and out. You're trying to maximize capillary density. All these things are going to be important for your recovery later down the road, which is going to allow you to recover between sets of your strength stuff, your max saying strength stuff, or, or whatever you're trying to do. So that's generally why you're going to go through that hypertrophy phase in the beginning. Okay. Uh, now, so a lot of this, you know, like obviously you said muscle size, uh, ga- gaining like actual muscle, but does this – where is this where MRV plays in like maximum recover recoverable volume? Because that is like a, something that I will admit, I don't know what that is, but I've heard people <laughs> talk about it. And, uh, and, and the, the concept of it seems a little bit confusing to me. So I, I guess, could we take like a pause and could you explain what that is? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's, um, it's not an area that I spend a tremendous amount of time on. Um, uh, but when you're in the coaching trenches, I get it that, that that's going to be super important to you. And basically what they're saying is uh, what's the volume that you can handle and still perform well with. Okay. Um, which is, is, is kind of a, that's a, that's the effective outcome they're trying to measure. And so what that generally means is, or, or one way to interpret that is saying, okay, if you and I are both training and after 10 sets of two or whatever we're doing, uh, I'm on the floor dead, but you're fine, ready to go. Well, you've got a much higher volume that you can recover from. Okay, okay. So right. yeah, that, that makes sense. I guess I when when I had heard people speaking about like you know your max recoverable volume, uh, it was more in in a sense I guess of trying to figure out the furthest you could push while still being able to be effective on heavy days. So mm-hmm. I mean, I guess yeah. that, that and that's that's a very individual response to training that you probably it's just an observational thing on the coach's yeah. standpoint or so, from the coach's yeah. standpoint. I, I'll explain it to you. Like, uh, I'll give the, uh, another example that I'll always give in my class. So the most important, if you want to get stronger, the most important thing that you need to do is lift something up very, very heavy one time. Right. Right. Specificity. But if you're so unfit that in going through a warm up to get ready to lift that thing up, you're exhausted well, then your strength will be limited by your conditioning because you don't even have the conditioning or the recoverability to be able to get to do enough of the strength work to make to make significant improvements in your strength. Right. And so what they're generally saying here is let's get you, you know, in shape, if you will. Let's get you fit so that instead of, you know, so so either one or two uh, conditioning is going to be said in a bunch of different ways. Uh, one, maybe you can train five days a week now instead of four days. You don't need that extra recovery day. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can go twice a day, a couple of days a week. You don't need that recovery day. Maybe you can do more total sets throughout the day. So again, I can do sets. I can do twenty sets of two of snatch, twenty sets of two of clean uh, jerks, twenty sets of two of front squat, because I built up that conditioning in the first set, as opposed to you who can only do ten sets of each before you're tired. Well, I've gotten double the strength work in. Right. Okay. So what that means is you got. Say we're doing. Uh, just we'll just pick one exercise, snatch. And you're doing 10 sets of two. So you're going to get 20 total reps in throughout the day at 90%. Mm-hmm. 
whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, if I can double that, then I get double the reps in. 